right, so today we're going to be installing a MagnaCleanse magnetic filter on this boiler. Um, the model we're going to be installing is the Pro 2XP, and we're going to be cutting this into the return side of this boiler. This is a floor mount uh, cast iron oil fired boiler. We're going to be cutting into the return side to capture all the magnetite before it makes it back into the heat exchanger of the boiler. Uh, it's not the only place this can be cut in. This can be cut in the supply as well. Ideally, we just like to cut it on the return so it captures everything before it makes it pass through the boiler. To do the install, we just need to isolate the system and drain it. So we're going to shut off the supplies and shut off our water feed, begin draining the boiler below where we're cutting it in, and then we'll go ahead with the install. On the top cartridge, we have an air vent. On the bottom of it, we have a drain. So we can take the cartridge off. Inside, we have this plastic sleeve over a magnet. This is what captures all the magnetite as it goes into the filter. And then the top and bottom also have sections for anything that's too large or not magnetic. It gets captured in here, so it act also acts as a dirt separator. The connection ports are baffled, so it's a cyclonic filter as well. So it's really a three-in-one style filter. When this is apart, once this is installed in the system and this covers off, you can also use this for your chemical dosing, and then after you can purge the entire uh, cartridge through your top air filter so you don't have to introduce any air to the system. So here I have the pipe cut, I'm just draining all the water out before I disassemble this and get it ready for the filter to install. So here we have installing the female adapter that came with the unit, it's an inch and a quarter NPT. You could also connect it directly to one inch compression uh, copper. So on this, fitting, on this filter itself, we have two fittings that have a full 360 degree swivel, so it doesn't have to be a vertical installation. And also supply and return are interchangeable. In this case, we're using the top as the supply and the bottom as the return, but we can flip flop this. It doesn't matter for the filter body. Now what we're going to do is turn the water back on and recharge the system. We'll let this fill up and pressurize. We'll check for leaks at the magnetic and dirt filter here. And then what we'll do is after we'll go around, we'll purge the system out, bleed out all the radiators. And once that's all set, we'll be able to turn the system on, let it run, and then shut everything back down and check the filter and see what we have captured inside the cartridge. So first we're going to isolate the filter, check what we've captured in it. So shut it off the isolation valves able to crack the air vent to relieve the pressure. So that right there is what we captured after just 15 minutes of runtime after livening the boiler back up. And to clean this off all you would have to do is just pull the magnet off the sleeve and you'd be able to rinse everything away and wipe it off. Put it back on your sleeve. You can check the bottom for any heavier particles that have been captured. Like I said, we've had a short run time here, so we haven't captured anything yet. Insert it back into the chamber. Tighten the filter housing. And then what we can do is leave this air vent open and just open the valve slowly to bleed the air out. And that way we won't introduce any air to the system. All right, so here we're going to introduce the chemical. So first we shut it off and isolate it. What we can do is take pressure off just like we've done before. At this point we're going to introduce the inhibitor into the system. This will treat up to 33 gallons of system water and it will neutralize up to 20% of any cleaner left in the system. So if you can't flush out low points um, or anything like that, it won't attack or they won't fight each other. AD also has an engineer's test kit, and this is used for testing system water quality. We can test for chlorides, copper, hardness, pH, and iron content. Although we have our magna cleanse in here uh, to keep the system free of any magnetic and dirt debris, we do want to make sure that total system health uh, is maintained, and that's through water treatment and water uh, quality testing. The pH 
test strips. So all we're going to do is dip this into some system water, shake it off and compare it with the chart on the bottle. And it's going to land right around that seven mark. And then I carry a digital pH meter. So we can just double check it with this and same idea. Dip this into the system water and that's registering about a 7.3 to 7.5. So we're getting roughly the same reading on both methods. We're gonna do a pH test. This is after the system's been flushed, the inhibitor's been added. We'll check system pH. That looks like it's right around between seven and eight, somewhere around seven and a half. We can double check that with the digital. And that's showing roughly the same, 7.35. So here we're doing a hardness test, same idea as a pH, just dip the tab in shake off the excess water, compare it with the chart, and we're showing 40 parts per million or less total hardness here. Uh, every unit will have an acceptable limit. Most is under 80 parts per million as well.